Velkommen i Nordjyske Jernbaners tog. Undervejs opdateres informationsskærmen. Toget kører til Højborg. Næste station, Quincy, toget stands sig kun med tryk på stopknap.
Don't be shy. Oh no, I spent lots of money. Oh no, they didn't have bags. Hi there lads and lasses, welcome to my channel on this very hot Saturday. As you saw this morning, I grabbed my bike, got on the train and I left Skagen for a little while to go and check out a used, well, pretty much all kinds of stuff, shop in Fredrikshavn, the town which is just south of me here. Um, everything is south of me here. If I go north, I'll end up in the ocean and then Norway. Um, very hot today, so it's nice uh, having a reason to be outside. Um, and um, this place, uh, Lese Hesten, or the, the Reading Horse, um, it's sort of a chain of uh, used, all sorts of things. You find uh, lots of places in Denmark, uh, in Copenhagen even, um, and some of you may have seen the one I visited in Olborg for Record Store Day. This one does not do new music at all, unless someone comes and sells them some new music right away. It's used stuff, used comic books, games, books, all that, all that stuff, you know. Um, but it's, it's fun to go once a while because here in Skagen there's nothing. We haven't had a place to buy records or even CDs probably since I would probably guess around 2005 uh, when the last sort of electronics uh, CDs microwave shop in Skagen closed down. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd show you what I got on my trip. Some of it was from a um, 
20 kroner um, large bin bins. Uh, he, he, I mean, he had records all over the place, and I couldn't really get to film it all. There were people a little bit all over the place, and it was really warm in there. So I, I kind of wanted to concentrate about on finding something worthwhile and then getting out of there and get something cool to drink. Um, but some of it was uh, 20 kroner, which currently 20 Danish kroner. Seven US dollars, maybe? No, no, no. That's completely wrong, sorry. Um, or like three, three and a half dollars, yeah. Something, something like that. Anyway, some of it was a little more expensive. Alan Parsons' project. This is uh, Gaudi. So, this is the album that's inspired by the life and works of Antonio Gaudi, the Catalan architect who never finished his Sagrada Familia Cathedral, which I th think is getting close to being finished. I've seen it from the outside. Uh, he was, of course, killed by something I like, a uh, tram, and uh, never... Well, he wouldn't have seen it being completed anyway. He would, would have had to live uh, a long, long time, but um, not being alive, of course, made it more difficult to finish. This uh, copy looks pretty good, 50 kroner. It's obviously at one time where a stage being cut, so you end up in a bargain bin. Bargain bin, that was the word I was looking for. Next one. I have never owned any albums by the Moody Blues. So I thought this would be a um, good start, since I've suddenly found a few of them. Um, for those who know, uh, don't need to say too much. These appear to be originals um, on the... Um, I'm sorry if the sound cuts off every time. Uh, on the um, Decca um, offspring, Darum, and they're from... This one's from 1968. Also available in Malmo. Since these are, you know, things most of you probably already, I would go into the gates things and stuff. And we got to Moody Blues again. Okay, this is probably the right. The Moody Blues, every good boy deserves favor. I, yeah. Are we scared yet? And next one was the Moody, Moody Blues again. Seventh Sojourn. Sojourn. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we were on the Seventh Sojourn. Everyone's talking about them. Um, I've seen the documentary, not least because I'm a huge fan of the director, um, British director, you know, did the Cornetto trilogy. Um, uh, the zombie film. Um, oh my god, I can't remember anything now. <laughs> you know, with. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the Sparks. Uh, you, Obviously, you can't watch uh, the Canadian Stud Muffin and not get some indication that you should probably listen to Sparks as well as, as that documentary. Uh, so this is my first Sparks album ever. And I paid 20 kroner for it. Three, three dollars. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. This one is from... Pulling Rabbits Out of a Hat is from 1984, which was a good year for a lot of things. The Eurythmics, for example, who made an album called 1984, for some reason. Not sure why. <laughs> this one. 
I, I bought this on cassette uh, when I was a teenager. You know, sometimes you buy, even even I, uh, who were really serious about my record buying, would buy a record because of the pretty lady, or even three of them. Of course, this is, these guys aren't Kylie Minogue, but you know, Bananarama. This was the last uh, album of the original um, crew. Um, she went on to uh, names today. I, like I said, it's really hot. She went on to um, do Shakespeare's Sister, which is an amazing uh, band, by the way, in, in my opinion. And they got a, a substitute later on, either with a reduced to duo. I don't remember. This was the last time I. I sort of kept an eye on what they were doing. And th this is not the Banana Rama that I at that time knew of, because I remember them uh, starting around, uh, that, you know, you had um, Sun Boy 3 and, and English pop band, early 1980s English pop band when they came along, Robert De Niro's Eyes and stuff like that. This, this is the stock ache in a Waterman Banana Rama. The, you know, the, the guys who did the uh, music, the music for, uh, yeah, Kylie Minogue, for example, and, and other artists, like, like Sonia. So anyway, Americans won't have a clue what I meant by that. Um, I think a lot of people bought the first and the second album by Paul Young, and then they um, sort of drifted off and lost interest or just weren't aware that he kept releasing albums. I, I lost track, but anyway, this is finally, I got the third Paul Young album. Um, and I, I mean, because I love the two first ones. I, I hope I like this. Um, but if I didn't, then again, 20 kroner. Danish kroner, mind. It's getting to be a lot of Norwegian kroner. I know I draw on and on about that, but never mind. Um, I don't know if I what I think about this band. I just remember that when I uh, was six or seven, uh, my parents got one. Well, they got sort of annoyed with me pestering them to get them get me music and records all the time. So they um, um, signed me up for a record club where I got a one record per month. Not the American version, but this uh, was called. Yeah, SMC, SMC, Scandinavian Music Club. And I, I got a lot of crap, but I mean, I remember getting Blondie, uh, Eat the Beat, and, and some of those things were quite good. Um, and a couple of times I remember I got uh, records by Dr. Hook. He was very popular in Norway, which of course then made us call him a Norge Sven, a friend of Norway, well, probably, which means you know, any act the Norwegians still like and the rest of the world have forgotten or discarded and they're always going to come tour uh, in that one place on the planet where they still uh, sell records like bands like Nazareth and Smokey, Uriah Heep, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, or well, who else was it who sold a ton of Nor uh, records in Norway and nowhere else? Um, Cohen, yeah. I think his mid 1980s al album, a Leonard Cohen, sold as, and it was the best selling album in Norway by far that year. It sold in the hundreds of thousands in a country with four and a half million people. And you say, uh, yeah, well, Norwegians love melancholy, melancholy music, and that's probably why we love Tanita Tikaram and stuff like that. And I, I remember he sold about up towards 300,000 copies, which was about as many as he sold for the, in the rest of the world or something like that. So even in his native Canada, he didn't sell that many copies. But this is Dr. Hook. Uh, actually, it's not just Dr. Hook. It's, um, it's not just Dr. Hook. It's uh, that band. Yeah, Dr. Hook and the Medicine Show. Uh, and the uh, album is called Belly Up. The fun thing about this is that it's back to front. This would normally be the front, but you can see the, the song titles are here. <laughs> 
Anywho, what I really like, and every time I see this, I, I get a warm heart. Look, isn't that pretty? The old orange CBS label. I don't know why I love them so much. Guess I'm crazy about records. Who knew? I own one Rod Stewart record CD. Never, never really. It's okay. Um, a little leaky more to Ronnie Wood, to be honest. And I never, I don't know, I own a one Small Faces album. Small Faces, isn't it? Sorry if I'm wrong. Uh, but I saw this one. Rod Stewart, Atlantic Crossing. Remember lots of people growing up when I visited people's homes. Uh, as a kid, you know, um, I would um, sort of saunter away from the kids' room and then find the parents' uh, record collection. And that's where I would be digging. Yes. Pretty copy, 20 kroner. Those first ones, Moody Blues, um, Alan Parsons, Project, they were not 20 kroner, they were um, 75 kroner each. Uh, this one, I, I promised myself I would never own a record uh, associated to this person because I, he was such a terrible person but i already own a lot of her records and i thought let's buy one record now to commemorate that she's passed on so it's a tina turner record it costs again 20 kroner it's this person and tina turner uh nutbush city limits so there she is with an old shaloppy not sure if she's angry at it, trying to fix it, get it started, or trying to push it back home. And here, I suppose, is the dream. Yeah, so, Tina Turner, God bless her. Um, one of the records that I got from that uh, Scandinavian music club that I remember liking a lot, and um, I tried playing it after finding it. It's been stuck, hidden somewhere for 35 years or something. And it was not in a very good shape. Um, it's not the same record, but I, I saw Susie Quattro. That's going to be fun, right? Hopefully. This is, by the way, it's a Scandinavian copy. There were actually Scandinavian records being made, even Norwegian ones. I remember a, a fair amount of Beatles and Rolling Stones singles, for example, were either made in Sweden or Denmark. And once in a blue moon, and they're quite rare, I think, uh, in Norway. But does anyone remember this label? I don't know where I remember it from, but I got such a Deja vu or blast from the past, past feeling when I saw this earlier today. Final one of the uh, vinyl records. Adam Ant, not Adam and the Ants. This is um, this is fourth album because there were um, the Dirk one, Adam and the Ants, and then there was Prince Charming. And I think this was the fourth album he did, and he did. And, well, not his writing partner, but the rest of the band, and they sort of concentrated on on him him on his own. Pussin, pussin, puss, oh, sorry about that. Pussin Boots. So not the uh, the animated film, starring Antonio Banderas. And um, but he doesn't look like this anymore. 
bless him, he's had lots at the best of times. And finally, I got two CDs. Def Leppard, Def Leppard, Leppard, sorry, Def Leppard. And yes, it's the uh, the pitch mode band from Nazi. Um, songs from the Sparkle Lounge. Um, I've only bought Def Leppard albums from the early part of their career, and I'm up to number five now. And then uh, this winter, I got one of their very recent ones. I think it was the, not the last one, one, the one before. I really enjoyed it. And so when I saw this one, I thought, well, uh, I'm not on a quest to get them all or anything, but we'll see. Final one. Um, I'm very slowly trying to get this band's entire discography. A lot of the 80s and 90s stuff have been out of print and, I, you know, sometimes you don't really want to pay that much for a CD that is starting to be, what, 35 years old and so on. But I finally found this one, Deep Purple, The Battle Rage is On, supposedly not a very good one. Um, Richard Blackmore was not really in a good mood while recording this. And his mood did not get any better when they started touring because apparently he just picked up sticks and, and left without any any preparation or anything for the rest of the band. So this was the last this was the last Mark II reunion uh, album. Did they do four? Into the outdoor, yeah, well, I think so. Uh, so that's uh, another one for the. Uh, so the question now will, will I buy Deep Purple albums made by Deep Purple after this? Because is there an incentive? Are you guys, do you guys have any interest in Deep Purple after this period? Um, you know, give us a comment and let me know. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little uh, tra uh, bike rail trip uh, here today. It was really nice. It's so warm. It's such a beautiful summer here. Just don't lit light any matches around. They're talking about uh, not doing uh, suntans, you know, the midsummer uh, witches fire thing. Um, sort of out of solidarity for everyone else being told not to light barbecues or, or fires uh, around. So it's, it's, it's very, very dry. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, please take care. Don't sit in the sun too long. <laughs> and uh, please click like and subscribe. And I wish you a continued good weekend and summer. Bye.